Cody Rall here. I've been thinking a lot about the electromagnetic properties of the brain lately. There's been a couple of findings within recent studies that elucidate certain aspects of consciousness and intelligence. It seems to be this constellation of tracks in 3D space. Different tracks that are firing at different rates, causing electricity to go through them. If you remember that when you fire an electric signal, it actually creates a tangential magnetic field around it. So what we have is a system of tracks that are influencing each other by resonating at different frequencies. Now resonance is kind of a freaky thing. Uh, if you look at older videos, of bridges, they actually used to have problems with this where wind would blow on a bridge and um, perhaps you had a bridge like this and wind blew it, it tilted just a little bit but came back to rest but if you had another gust hit it at the same time it could actually create enough destabilization that just a gust of wind could blow over an entire bridge. And that's the uh, demonstration of how powerful resonance can be. Now our brain circuits are firing at different rhythms, slower rhythms, faster rhythms, Usually the visual information that's coming in uh, through our eyes is interpreted in certain ways and that usually is quicker resonance firing frequencies within the brain that gives us uh, a lot of control over the stimuli that it's coming in. Whereas things like mood, emotion, uh, and different biological mechanisms that are happening over a longer period of time manifest in slower brain wave oscillations. Now each one of these oscillations can affect each other and it creates this uh, whole almost like a grammar of different brain oscillation waves that manifest uh, how we're feeling that day, our mood, our personality, our intelligence, our consciousness. And it's interesting when you look at how the brain that we know in us is the most complicated thing in the universe that we're aware of. And it's interesting that the most complicated in terms of connections thing that we are aware of is the most intelligent thing that, that we are aware of. It makes me wonder about different things, like this plant obviously is alive, uh, and it has, it's a very complex thing. It's got a lot of connections within it, it's got a lot of processes, a lot of active processes that are going on. But perhaps if you look at a stone like this, a stone you wouldn't usually say is alive. But if you're looking at complexity and arguing that perhaps consciousness is within a spectrum, that the more complex things get, the more that they manifest consciousness and intelligence, perhaps a stone actually is to a degree consciousness or intelligent, but to a much smaller than our own brains because of the much less complexity that it has. They were doing studies recently with the functional MRI and looking at uh, putting people under propofol. Now propofol is an anesthetic that is still used a lot in surgeries and it's actually the same chemical that killed Michael Jackson but regardless still used a lot and they were looking at the connections, the active connections within people's brains and as they were put down further and further from consciousness with propofol what they found was that the connections within the brain were actually going offline so that the less metabolically connected the brain was the less conscious the people were. And it goes more towards your consciousness is actually the amount of connectedness that's happening within your mind. Some interesting research coming about schizophrenia just within the last month is that unfortunately it looks like schizophrenia has a high genetic component. We've known this for some time, but now they've identified a specific gene that seems to be tagging connections within neurons called dendrites with a chemical that actually causes them to be killed later on in life uh, in their later teens, early 20s, around the time that people develop schizophrenia. And when you look at people that had schizophrenia, what you actually find is that the brain mass was reduced by the time that they are aged, means that they're losing brain matter. With all this electromagnetic spectrum stuff going on, I really wonder how much of our brain actually like, filters out stuff that's happening within our environment. You know, I, even more so now with, a, like, even, for example, the camera that I'm talking to right now, uh, this phone that I'm carrying around in my pocket, all these devices are emitting electromagnetic radiation. And I'm not trying to make you paranoid or anything, but what I think the brain is doing is actually filtering out 
a lot of information that's happening around us within that electromagnetic spectrum field that we're not aware of, like radio waves, X waves, X rays, or any of the other ones that are around us that we're actually aware of because we have objects that can measure that thing. But one of the things about the brain is that only 15% of the neurons within the brain are actually neurons that fire electricity and do those circuits. The rest is kind of like, they call it glia, and glia stands for glue, but these cells do a lot more than that. They kind of regulate the neurons themselves, keeping them from getting overwhelmed by all the stimulus coming in. And what I think perhaps is what's going on with schizophrenia is that you're losing these dendrites and you're losing the ability to filter out the extraneous electromagnetic radiation uh, stimulus. And what it's doing is overstimulating people. Uh, people with schizophrenia, like they always complain of like having a microchip in their head or being given secret messages by the government or being abducted by aliens, all these paranoid things that manifest perhaps out of being overwhelmed by the amount of information that's coming at them. One of the most common findings in schizophrenia across the board is a uh, auditory stimulus thing where you give them an auditory stimulus and looking at the brain waves, usually if you give someone an auditory stimulus, you can see the brain react to it in a certain way with an amplitude. And as you give them more of that same auditory stimulus, the brain dampens that down. So the first time it goes high and then it goes lower and then it goes lower. With people with schizophrenia, it actually keeps going the same amplitude. It like can't dampen down the amount of information that's coming in. When you look at people, uh, their brain scans, when they actually talk on their phones, you can actually see that the electromagnetic radiation actually affects the brain metabolism slightly. Uh, I think that in normal people, it's negligible, but perhaps in people with schizophrenia, they get overwhelmed by the amount of stimulus, which means that our consciousness really has to do with the amount of connectedness within the brain and that anything that perturbs that amount of connectedness could potentially cause you to lose touch with the rea reality that most of us know, the reality that I'm looking at right now around me that makes sense to me biologically, but actually probably has a lot more going on that would be overwhelming if my brain wasn't actively using its mechanisms to construct the re reality that I know and love and can interact with right now. Uh, that's all I had for today. Thanks so much for the listen. It's Cody Wall for Tech for Psych. Talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye.